Hey guys, today I am talking about tomatoes and over 60 tips that will help you grow some of the best tomatoes you've ever grown. We're a couple of months away from our planting season, so I wanted to go through as many of these, not in great detail, but I'm just going to give you an overview of each tip and some links to other videos I've created about these tips. So anyways, keep watching and I'll tell you every way I can think of to grow your tomatoes as big, tasty, and sweet as you've ever had before. Now the first tip I can tell you is about Epsom salt and it's really one of those things that's great for adding magnesium to your soil. You'll just take a teaspoon and sprinkle around the base of your plant. You only want to do this once when you plant it and then again mid-season. You don't want to do it too much. You can put too much Epsom salt on your tomatoes. But just remember beginning when you plant it and then mid-season. Now once you're past your last expected frost date and you can find that by putting in your zip code at weather.gov and it'll tell you what your expected last frost date should be. But when you're planting your tomatoes, you want to plant them two thirds deep. So you're going to cut off all these lower limbs and only leave the top one third of the plant sticking out. All these fine hairs you see along the plant will become an entire root and it will help feed the plant. So you want to remember, remember planting deep is a really good thing to do with your tomatoes. Now, if you want to improve the flavor of your tomatoes, you want to do companion planting, something like basil, marigold, plant it near your tomatoes, and that can help actually help. And I'll tell you a little bit later on some things that will repel insects away from your plant as far as companion planting goes. But basil, marigold, even garlic will help improve the flavor. And I've got a video I created about growing giant elephant garlic if you'd like to take a look at that. So remember, companion planting can help your tomatoes along throughout the season. Now, I did a video not too long ago about coffee grounds in the garden, and I'll link that up above. But coffee grounds are one of those things that can truly help your tomatoes with some nutrients and also can repel some insects. Now, consistent watering is extremely important, especially as your fruit starts to set on your tomatoes. If you fail to water in a consistent pattern, then you're going to have problems such as splitting and possibly even other issues with weakening the plant so that insects can come in and attack it, such as aphids. One of my favorite things to use in the garden is a micro irrigation system. Even if you don't have a traditional irrigation system, you can go with something as simple as hooking it up to your faucet with a timer on it and then hook up a micro irrigation system to that so it will take the work out of watering your tomatoes. Now in that same vein about keeping the roots moist is make sure you mulch. Now this is one of my favorite types of mulch. This is a very finely shredded pine bark. I buy it at our local hardware store. The big box store called Lowe's has it and the bag actually says soil conditioner on it. Not only will it help keep the roots moist but it will also protect it from possible other insects that might get to the base of the plant. So mulching is a good way to prevent drying out and from attacks from certain types of insects it makes it just a little bit harder for them to get to the base of your tomato plant now pruning these suckers on tomato plants is a critical way of getting better and bigger fruits if you notice right here on these branches you'll notice suckers beginning to form right here at the base of each one of these branches as they come out you want to prune them off and don't allow them to draw some of the energy from the plant so you want these branches, the main branches, to be producing your fruit and not allow these suckers to grow. So that's one of the most important tips I can tell you is by going through and removing each sucker as it comes out. There's one up here at the top. I can't quite see that on thing, but there's one here, one here, and they just form right there in the armpit of that branch right there. I don't know if you can see it too easy because the light's not great in here, but removing those is really a critical thing when growing tomatoes if you want the best possible fruit to form. Now supporting your tomatoes and keeping them off the ground is critical. Vine tomatoes will naturally grow on the ground and that's how they would grow in the wild, but we don't want that happening because it's going to produce a lot of problems with disease and insects getting to them. So you want to support it by trellises, cages, and I've got some videos coming up in the springtime once we've gotten past our last fall state about creating some unconventional trellises and some new ways to do it. So remember, that's really critical that you use some type of cage or trellis system to keep your tomatoes growing up rather than out across the ground. Unless we're talking about the shrub type, which they will pretty much maintain their shape. But the indeterminate types that are going to just keep growing like a vine, you're going to want to keep a, you're going to want to have a trellis system in place. Now, whether you're using an organic fertilizer or a synthetic one, you want to make sure that you don't put too much nitrogen in the soil. Over fertilizing with nitrogen with nitrogen will produce a lot of leaves and not a lot of fruit. One of the best products I've found that's not organic is this Schultz Bloom Plus. I really like it because the middle number is extremely high, has a lot of phosphorus, will help, and that's specifically going to help with the root growth and with fruit production. So just remember that if you have something that has a high nitrogen 
content in it, whether it's organic or synthetic, it's going to cause more leaf production and less fruit production. So you want to gear it towards once you've got the plant growing, initially maybe a little bit of nitrogen, but you want to switch over to a high phosphorus and that's going to help your fruit production throughout the entire summer. So if you can attract natural predators to your garden and especially your tomatoes, that's going to help control the aphids, something like ladybugs or the praying mantis. I had to think there what I was trying to remember. Praying mantis or ladybugs, we're going to eat a lot of those aphids. So if you can draw those to your garden, whether you can order them from someone who's producing them in a proper way. Some of the ladybug sellers online are not producing the ladybugs. They're going out into the wild and collecting them. And that's not a good thing. So if they can grow the ladybugs in a laboratory like setting then that would be the best way to do it but you want to make sure they're doing it responsibly and not just going out and collecting them another thing about ladybugs is when you release them into the garden a lot of times they just leave the garden so if you can put the right type of plantings in your garden that will draw them naturally that would be a great thing now if you have really acidic soil adding a tablespoon of baking soda around the base of the plant will lower the acidity just a little bit and sweeten the tomato so that's one little trick if you have baking soda on hand, just do that around the base of each plant, no more than a tablespoon, and that will help make your tomatoes a little bit more flavorful and a little bit less acidic. Now using aspirin in the garden is a really great thing. It will help if you use it as a foliar spray, it will help increase the disease resistance of your tomatoes. So I'll link that video up above, but that's one thing that will really help is using aspirin in the garden and it will really boost your tomato strength and natural disease resistance. Now below a tomato plant, you can do things like putting fish leftovers, like a fish head or a fish slurry. I made a video about that. I'll link that on how to make that. I made 10 different types of fertilizers, but that particular type of thing, planting it before you put your tomato in, dig the hole and then put a little bit of soil on top of it and then put in your plant. That can really help with the slow decay of that fish head. It will help your plants with minerals, the bones that are in the fish, so things like that will really make a difference in your tomato growth. Now on your tomatoes themselves, if they have a problem with blossom end rot, what you can do is you can create a powdered eggshell formula. I've got a video that shows you exactly how to do that. I'll link it up above. But just putting the eggshells directly into the garden, that can take literally years for those eggshells to break down. So you need to go through a little bit of a process to make it work and take a look at that video and it'll show you exactly how to turn common eggshells into like a magic powder that will make your tomatoes grow like crazy. Now, if you live in an area like I do, zone 7A, and we get lots of fungal problems and diseases because we have such high humidity. So creating an antifungal agent from milk, 50% milk, 50% water, and use it as a foliar spray right before the humidity sets in can help reduce those fungal diseases. So you want to monitor the pH in your soil at least once a month around your tomatoes. And you can do it with something like this, a pH monitor, but you can lower the pH with vinegar and you can raise it with baking soda. So just keeping track of that because tomatoes themselves like it to be a little bit on the acidic side, below 6.8 to about 5.8, somewhere in that range is going to be the ideal point at where tomatoes are going to grow their best. Now, I like to order tomato seeds from places like Amazon and eBay and online in general, and sometimes from seed catalogs, but it's not quite as common as it used to be because I want the seeds right away. But one thing you can do is you can soak those seeds in a chamomile tea to improve the germination rate. A lot of people I see say that they tried to plant the seeds and they had a very low germination rate. So that's one of those things. Chamomile tea, just soak it for a few hours, four to six hours before you go to plant it, let them dry out and then go to do the planting because that will improve your overall germination rate. Now, whether you're starting your seedlings in a tray or in the open ground, one way you can prevent fungal diseases is by sprinkling cinnamon powder around the base of it. And that's a great way to prevent it. It acts as a natural fungicide. Now, another companion plant you can use is stinging nettle. And if you plant that near your tomatoes, that can improve flavor and also protect it from certain diseases. Now, we use this in the bonsai world, which is mycorrhizal fungi, but you can also use it at the base of your tomato plants. And that will also help with root formation and overall health of the tomato plant. So that's one thing. I'll put a link down below as to where to order that from but it's kind of an unusual thing that most people don't think of, but you find that growing a lot of times on the underside of logs. You'll see that fungi growing there when you turn it over. And that's really important because it grows naturally in the soil. And if you can boost that in there, 
That's one of those microbiological agents that can really help your tomato plant. Now, sea kelp is another thing that can help boost the resistance to disease and other issues that might come along in your tomato plant. You can order that from Amazon. I'll put that link as well down below. Sea kelp is really a high nutritional product that you can mix with water and pour it at the base of your plant once a week to really help it get a really head start on the growing season. Now watering with hydrogen peroxide at the base of your plant can increase root health by adding more oxygen to the soil. I have a video I did uh, a while back about using hydrogen peroxide and its many uses in the garden. So I'll link that up above. I'm limited, I think, to five links per video from YouTube. So I won't be able to link all of these. So some of them I might actually put in the description. So if you don't see it up here, look down below and you can probably find it. It's not that hard. Now powdered yeast can also be something you can use on your tomatoes to help with fruit production and growth of the overall plant. You use about one teaspoon per gallon when you're watering it and you can also use it as a foliar feed. Now you can also do a companion planting and I'm probably going to mispronounce this but amaranth is a plant that you can plant at the base of your tomato plant that will attract beneficial insects and act as a living mulch. So I've never tried that before but I'll put a picture up of somewhere in the video that shows you what that looks like and you can probably find that at your local garden center or you may be able to order it online. I've never done that before but I'm thinking about doing it just as a kind of an experiment this year trying a lot of new things with my tomato plants. Now if you have a willow tree on your property you can take some of those branches cut them to about six to eight inches each put them in a gallon of water and allow them to soak overnight and the hormones from those will help boost your root system in your tomato plant. Just water at the base about once a week until they become really established and that will speed up that process of them getting established in the soil by creating a very large root ball. Now I mentioned earlier about making the powdered eggshell to prevent blossom in right, but another blossom in rot, but another thing that you can use is oyster shell flour. You can make it yourself or you can buy it online, but that's another thing that you can use that will help increase the calcium in the soil to stop the blossom end rot problems. And you can also use it as a foliar feeding to boot. Now, if you drink a lot of green tea, you can, instead of throwing the grounds away, you can use it as a mulch. Just put it about a two inch circular barrier around the base of the plant. And that can really help boost it as well by adding extra nutrients to the soil and also adding a little bit of a barrier between the soil and keeping moisture inside and around the plant because it can become green tea once that dries it will almost create like a mat but you don't want to put it more than two inches out around the base of the plant but that would be in the starting st stages of your seedling because you're going to only have a limited amount of green tea seed powder used unless you're working a coffee shop so that's one thing if you've got access to a lot of green tea powder after it's been used in a tea then you're in luck because you could use it on all your tomato plants now, if you're about to start your growing season and you're starting to get warm days and a lot of sunny days, one thing you can do is soil solarization, which is basically taking some clear plastic and putting it over the area where you're going to be planting your tomatoes. And that will act as a heat. It will attract heat and it will kill off any soil borne diseases. Just put that on the ground, put rocks on all four corners and maybe one in the center to prevent it, wind from getting underneath it. And then as the day goes, days get a little bit warmer, that ground will be heated up and that will kill off some of those diseases that might affect your tomato plants later in the season. Now you can also use Whey, W-H-E-Y, as a foliar spray. You can buy it for consumption at the health food store or just about anywhere nowadays and just mix about one tablespoon per gallon, spray it on the leaves, and that will present, prevent any problems. If you live in an area like I do where we have extremely humid summers and there's always mold, mildew, all kinds of problems that pop up during this really the hottest, humid time of the summer, occasionally spraying it with a whey foliar spray will help prevent those problems from happening. Now you can also make a foliar spray from the herb Comfrey, C-O-M-F, I think it's C-O-M-F-R-E-Y, and I've never done this before, but I've heard you can do that as a foliar spray and that will act as a calcium rich spray that will help your tomatoes throughout the season. So that might be one of those experiments I do this year just to see on one or two plants to see how it works. Now if you have powder milk in your pantry that's another thing that you can sprinkle at the base of the plant and that will also help with the calcium levels in the soil. Just sprinkle about a tablespoon around the base of each plant. Another thing you can spray as a foliar spray is stinging nettle tea. You can use that the foliar spray that will prevent some diseases from happening on your tomatoes. Also planting your tomatoes near chives can help enhance the flavor and also repel certain insects. Watering your seedlings, your tomato seedlings with a chamomile tea will help also with 
damping off disease that sometimes happens to a lot of seedlings that suddenly die or start to wilt on you. So just remember the chamomile tea in a misting sprayer like that on your seedlings before they go out in the garden can really help. Now I mentioned earlier about the 10 different types of fertilizers I used. One of those was banana peel fertilizer that I went through a process of creating it into a powder. And I'll, if you'll take a look at that video about the 10 fertilizers, if I haven't already, I can't link it twice, but I'll try to link it if I haven't already done so, but go and check that out of the 10 types of fertilizer. I believe it was the last video I had done. Now leaf mold is something you can pick up from any forest. If you live near a forested area, you can take leaf mold that's been under certain large trees for years, getting more and more nutritious as the years go by. Taking a small bucket out to the forest and scooping up that and adding it around the base of your tomatoes will do wonders for your garden. It will add a lot of microbial life and a lot of nutrition to your plants, especially your tomatoes. So I made a video previously about wood ash, and that's another thing that you can add to the base of your tomatoes. If I haven't used up my five links, I'll put a link to that as well. Now talking about companion planting with tomatoes, also parsley will also help improve the flavor of your tomatoes and makes a great companion plant. Now each year towards the middle or the end of the season, I will have a lot of problems with the large hornworms planting borage, B-O-R-A-G-E, near your tomato plants can also help with the hornworms and help reduce those around your tomato plants if you use that as a companion planting. Now I have a large amount of mint I've planted. It has taken over an entire four by eight bed. So you have to be careful about planting mint, but it also makes a good companion plant for tomato because it can repel the aphids and other insects. So just remember you want to plant just a small amount and keep it under control because it will take over an entire garden. Mint grows extremely fast and it comes back year after year, even bigger than it was the previous year. Now this was a little bit harder to find. So if you have a farm supply near you, you can use oat straw and that adds silica to the soil, which will help the plant cell walls and make your tomato plant just a little bit stronger. Another way you can improve the overall taste of your tomatoes is by adding rock dust ground into a powder. It will improve the flavor of your tomatoes and it's a little bit harder to find. So if I can find some online, I'll link it down below. But that's another thing that a lot of tricks that older farmers use is a little bit of ground up rock dust for the minerals and also will help the soil and your plant do a lot better. Now, several videos back, I made a vermi composter, and basically it's just a composting system, and it's really cheap to make. It's not difficult at all, but you're using worms to help speed up the process of composting, and you're using those worm castings around your tomato plants. Just taking a handful of that and putting it at the base of each tomato plant makes a huge difference. If you can't or don't want to create your own vermi composter, you can order worm castings directly from Amazon. I'll link that in the, I'm linking all these products down below in the description, but that's another thing you can add is the worm castings to really boost your tomato growth. Now, another thing when you're planting your tomatoes, you need to take into account the size they're gonna be when they're mature and you wanna keep them spaced out where there's good airflow and that itself will prevent diseases. If you're overcrowding your tomato plants, that can bring in disease a lot faster than you would ever imagine. Now, if you're growing your tomatoes in open ground, you wanna to remember to rotate your types of tomatoes and maybe even tomatoes and cucumbers, whatever else you may have growing. If you're growing in buckets, you want to refresh the soil in that bucket because there could be diseases in the soil that's going to destroy your tomato plant as it grows this coming season. So just remember, crop rotation and soil rotation is a good idea. Also, if you go back to the trick about the plastic to kill any soil-borne diseases, that's going to help you as well. But just remember, rotating inside the garden is always a great idea. Now, I believe I mentioned dandelion tea earlier, but I'll come back and say it can also be a good source of calcium. So watering it at the base can really help if you have a lot of access to dandelions. You can soak the dandelions in water and add that to the base of your tomato plants. About 24 to 40 hours, 48 hours of soaking with the dandelions you may have growing naturally in your yard. Now, one thing few people do, and that is pruning tomato plants. Light pruning your tomato plants leaves, allowing more sunlight to penetrate further into the plant, and also it improves air circulation. The third thing it does, it, instead of putting that energy into the leaves, it produces, it puts more energy into the soil. So that's one thing to remember is when you do that light pruning, it has several benefits that will make your tomatoes grow bigger and you won't be producing leaves, you'll be producing larger tomatoes. So watering your tomatoes with rainwater is a great idea because rainwater is naturally a little bit more acidic than your tap water, and you can build a system. I'll create a video pretty soon. I haven't created it yet, but I'll create it and add it to my list of videos 
that show you how to make a rainwater collection system that will probably take you through the entire summer unless you have a massive, massive garden. Now, I probably should have put all my companion plantings together into one video, but another companion plant that you should do with tomatoes is carrots. That can really be a great thing to do. It helps aerate the soil a little bit and also can improve the flavor of the tomatoes as well. Now, using garlic as a foliar spray can help with diseases and pests as well. You just take a few cloves of garlic, put it in a blender, fine, finely grind them up with maybe just about a half a cup of water, then put it into your gallon sprayer and then spray that directly onto your tomatoes and any other plants if you want to, cucumbers, whatever. But that really makes a great disease prevention and insect control to your tomato plants. So using an electric toothbrush is a great way to pollinate your plants. Go from flower to flower, just gently touching each one, or even just shaking the plant can release some of that pollen. But remember, if you have multiple varieties of tomato plants and you cross-pollinate, you may end up with a completely different variety of tomatoes. So just remember, you may want to only pollinate same type tomato plants if you don't want to create a new variety for yourself. Now, if you have a problem with blossom end rot, taking some beeswax and putting it on the underside of each tomato, just a small amount can help prevent that. And you won't have as many problems with the blossom end rot this year. Now, you can do a green manure crop like clover. You plant it in your garden. And then when it's time to plant your seedlings or your new tomato plants, turn it over in the garden and bury it. And that will act as a natural fertilizer and it will break down and really assist your tomato plants in their growth and it's just a organic way to do a cover crop for your tomatoes. Now I made an entire video about adding charcoal to your garden and it's really one of those incredible things that can make a difference in your garden for decades to come. I'll link that video up above but charcoal in the garden is incredibly important to improve the soil where you're growing your tomatoes. Also aquarium, if you're big into aquariums and you occasionally clean out your aquarium, don't flush that water down the drain because that water can be very beneficial to your tomato plants. Taking about a cup to two cups of aquarium water and putting it right at the base of your tomato plant can also help. That's very nutritious water. So if you have also if you have a pond that has fish in it using that water as well, that's a very highly nutritious water that you could add about a cup to two cups per week and really boost your tomato growth. Now, if you live in a particularly hot climate, providing some shade in the hottest part of summer can prevent sun scald. I don't have to do that, but I know that in some areas further, maybe zone eight, nine, or 10, sun scald is a real issue. So providing a little bit of shade in the middle to the end of summer can really keep your tomato plants healthy and growing and producing fruit. Now, my wife makes a lot of rice and she washes the rice before she cooks it in her special rice cooker. So using that rice water, it's going to be kind of a cloudy white water, has a lot of beneficial effects on your plant. It has one of those things that a lot of people don't think about. They just pour it down the drain and forget about it. But saving things like that in the kitchen and then make it, letting them work their way out to the garden can really boost your tomato production by using that starchy, cloudy rice water. So guys, I hope you'll implement at least five or six of these ideas into your garden. I think you'll see a huge difference in fruit production. If you like the video, I hope you'll like and subscribe and leave any comments you have down below of any ways that you grow tomatoes that I may have left out. So have a great day.